You're watching EASD TV. My name's Vivian Parry, and with me is the great Roy Taylor. I say the great Roy Taylor because he delivered the Claude Bernard Lecture, the EASD's most prestigious award. And these awards, the Claude Bernard, honors people who've made lifetime contributions to the study of diabetes. And uh, Roy, your contribution has been singular. And I do know, by the way, that everybody I know who uh, has seen that uh, Roy give his lecture said it was magnificent. So tell me, what did you talk about in the Claude Bernard? Thank you very much, Marianne. I talked about the research journey, which took us to the conclusion that type 2 diabetes is a simple condition of a person having acquired more fat than they can tolerate inside the liver and inside the pancreas. So a single environmental cause for the diabetes, of course there's genetic susceptibility, but that comes as a given when that person walks into the doctor's office. But how to deal effectively with the type 2 diabetes? Well, in relatively early type 2 diabetes, say in the first six years, there is a way of getting that person back to full health and normalizing their risks for everything. But that wasn't a very popular approach, was it, Roy? No, <laughs> it was extremely controversial when I first presented the results of the twin cycle hypothesis, because this was all built on the hypothesis as to what caused type 2 diabetes. And when I presented the results, showing that if you take away this determinant factor of too much fat inside liver, inside pancreas, the diabetes will go away. That caused mayhem, and I was roundly attacked. It cut Luckily, it was in the days before social media, so it, you were all right. Yes, relatively all right. But it cut across the belief, first of all, that type 2 diabetes was a life sentence, and we need to tell that to the patient coming in with a new diagnosis, very depressing. And secondly, the belief that the beta cell was inexorably going downhill is so fixed in the minds of doctors and scientists that was difficult to dislodge. But it really hadn't been realized that this inexorable downhill only continued as long as the causative factor was present and I was taking away the causative factor and seeing that the beta cells recovered. So this was not a popular message. Breaking into a belief system and telling people that what they believe is not correct is never popular, whether it's in geographical beliefs, political beliefs, scientific beliefs. And so this caused mayhem. So how long did it take, Roy, for you to overcome this hostility? What was the thing that you did that helped prove that what you were saying was right? Well, the interesting thing was that the hostility went down in steps. The first thing was when CounterPoint was published. CounterPoint being? The CounterPoint was the first study that tested the hypothesis. We developed this research instrument, which was a low calorie diet, and we found we could reverse diabetes back to normal. It was picked up in the popular press, and I was inundated with emails, and then we had to put all the how to do it information into the public domain on the website. Then a second wave of emails, and so individuals with type 2 diabetes who were desperate to find a way out of their terrible condition were right on board, right at the start, and they themselves proved to themselves this was big. This was effective. Next were the GPs, who all said, none of my patients would do that, and then someone did. And they were 100% on board, seeing their drug bill going down, and the patient returning to health. And last of all, the specialists, with complicated belief systems, but eventually running the direct study, a population-based study delivered by nurses or dietitians in primary care, trained to use this research instrument, this low-calorie diet, that really made a big difference because the results in this population-based study were quite clear. 
dramatic effects, lots of people coming into remission and benefit beyond. And actually you were helped very much by the media because your research has been helped enormously by this, uh, you know, people with lived experience, they've been driving the change. And the media was particularly important, wasn't it? The media have been exceptionally good all the way through. And so the interviews, the talking to reporters, uh, that's hit the headlines, even hit the front pages from time to time. Very often the reporters naturally want the human interest story, and I've been able to point them to people who've explained that this is a life-changing event for them. Their return to health is astonishing to them because they were told to expect things to go steadily downhill and complications to come. So the media have played an enormous role in this matter. First, we had the proof of the concept in 2011. By 2021, 22, we were launching a national program on the NHS for remission of type 2 diabetes. It would not have happened so fast without the media. And what are your reflections on your journey as you've, as you've gone through? I mean, you've, you've done something quite remarkable but what have you learnt about how to do research and about how to take people along with you along the way? It's all about people. And the research has mirrored what I've done in the clinic because I've learnt from my own patients. First of all, effective ways to lose weight. That's where the research instrument, this low calorie diet comes from. Secondly, listening to our research participants in our exercise studies and learning that starting an exercise program is associated with compensatory eating and a tendency to weight gain. So yes, I've run four miles, now I'll have a treat and, and eat a donut. Precisely, as well as some subconscious aspects to compensatory eating. And realizing that, yes, we can have decreased food intake and physical activity, but hey, get the time right. Get people from A to B with their weight first, then start the new exercise program gradually. That is effective. How, what made you go into diabetes in the first place? Well, it was the intrinsic fascination of this condition, which was so evidently physiology gone wrong. And my professor of physiology, when I was in second year medicine, was capable of explaining things so clearly, he actually quoted Claude Bernard in his lectures about applying logic and science step by step and clear thinking. That stuck with me. And then by serendipity, the youngest, most clinically skillful of the junior doctors on my ward, where I was a newly qualified doctor, was specializing in diabetes, and he was fantastic. Clinically, he tells the best jokes of anyone, but that's what interested me in diabetes as well, because Ian drew my attention to the human aspects of the condition. So that just struck a chord, and everything else was history. And you've also had at Newcastle, where uh, you've worked really pretty much all your career, uh, you've had a succession of wonderful people that you've sent out into the world. Uh, tell me about some of your alumni. The people who work for me are just fantastic. The majority, I have to say, have gone on to become consultant physicians in various hospitals throughout the UK but they're applying the scientific method. They're doing the best for the individual person in front of them. That's wonderful. Some have gone into medicine. One is at Harvard uh, pursuing his career. That's fabulous. But the enthusiasm with which they pursued their work uh, was just phenomenal. And they delivered way above and beyond in terms of hours. I might go into the magnetic resonance center late evening and they'd be there working away on data, talking, making things work. So yes, the lifeblood of the research has been the young people who've come through, the people who have actually done the hands-on bit. And that's tremendous because it's huge fun to work with young people. It helps keeps oneself with a, a fresh outlook on life.
And the great thing is that actually, you know, the, the, the idea of dieting and more exercise, which is a mantra that's given to everybody, somehow you've managed to get that to the ordinary person with uh, living with type 2 diabetes and they've received it with enthusiasm and that's quite an uh, quite an achievement in itself yes doctors have to be good communicators and communicate what's really possible because again medicine is entirely the art of the possible and seeing that uh, the weight loss process was best done as a single step, short, defined period. People could plan it, say, between their birthday and their wedding anniversary. They could choose when to start, and it could be explained to them. Look, if you had a serious illness, your doctor told you you needed an operation, without hesitation, you would take time off work, spend a couple of weeks in bed recuperating, then more time. Well, why not do the same with type 2 diabetes? It's a medical emergency. And have two months where you're getting from A to B with your weight. Then getting on with the rest of your life with merely avoiding weight regain. That struck home to people together with the fact that here was a way out, a way potentially to regain health. And so those two factors allowed me to communicate this and get the message over. And I hope with the Claude Bernard lecture those messages have got out to a wider audience of doctors who will go forth and really make this work. Well, we do hope so. And uh, there are a legion of fans uh, of Roy Taylor, not only in the UK, but uh, all over Europe now, all taking you know, the, the advice that you've uh, given them and it's made such a difference to their lives. And that in itself must have been incredibly rewarding to you. So uh, thank you, Roy. Um, it's a magnificent lecture. So it's available on uh, Catch Up um, on uh, ESD site. So do please go and have a look at it. I promise you it's an experience well worth enjoying. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be with you again soon.